in this video, we're gonna talk geology again. Yeah! And I'm gonna show you some interesting features about mines and why they're there. That and a whole lot more coming up. What's so important about this area? This is a gold producing district. And on the other side of that hill is the Tyro mine. It was a huge gold producer and it's classified as a stringer load deposit. It had stringers running through the rhyolite. And like I told you, if you haven't seen my last video, I'll leave a link down below that you can find a lot of gold in rhyolite in gold producing districts that have fractured rhyolite that's been re-cemented together, which is called brecciated rhyolite. Or if you got a lot of hematite staining in there or a combination thereof. So that's really important. Now in this mine behind me, this is actually, this was drove into the side of the mountain because they needed a haulage drift. And the reason why is because there's a huge rhyolitic dike that cuts through all this granitic gneiss. So they wanted to get to it really easy without having to create some type of a tram system which costs a lot of money. It's a lot cheaper just to drive a drift in. So that's what they did. They put in a haulage drift. It's about maybe 500 feet long and it comes up, cross cuts up underneath that rhyolitic dike, that fractured dike. And then they just go straight up and then they create an ore pass with that. And it's a lot cheaper and easier to bring the ore out and then dump it into bins or trucks, depending on what you're using to haul it away. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you in here real quick and I'll show it to you. But it looks like it's extensively worked because I've seen mine dumps, not tailings. They're called mine dumps. Mines make mine dumps, mills make tailings. Remember that. But there's mine dumps all over the side of the hill. And there's some good looking ore out here too. It looks like they might've been working this haulage drift for a while. So anyway, I'm gonna take you in real quick and show it to you. And then later on, if I got time, I'll take you to the Tyro mine, which produced phenomenal gold. Its average was 0.3 ounce per ton, but they hit pockets in iron and manganese oxide, which that's a very important combination, remember that, of 11 ounces per ton. Now, if you didn't hear that, I'll say it again. 11 ounces per ton. Get that in your skull, boy. So you know what I'm gonna say, huh? Ooh, you better, so come on. Let's go. Now this is just a haulage drift, that's all this is. So they could get to that rhyolitic dike that's sandwiched up there on the hill. And that's why we got all this positive airflow coming in. Barometric pressure has a lot to do with how mines react to airflow. So high barometric pressure or low barometric pressure will either pull air in and suck it out the top or suck it in through the top and bring it out through the bottom. So we're gonna go in there and take a look. Come with me, boy. Monker goes back quite a ways. Like I said, it's just a haulage drift. It's got a tall cut to it. You can see some of the wooden posts that are in the rock there. Looks like they had water in here at one time, probably from the top. Nice and warm in here, I'll take it. Oh uh, yeah, we got some water seepage right here. Look at that. Isn't that nice? You can see all alkali deposition there. Now this is the uh, this is the country rock. We've got a lot of granitic gneiss in the area. You've got a lot of biotite granite in the area that they were cutting through. And this is just nothing more than a haulage at it. Now notice how there's no echo anymore. There's a borehole right there, you see that? That's cool. That means the rock, if it doesn't echo, you got problems. It means the rock is soft, it's absorbing everything. Right up underneath the, oh, there's a bat right there, see him? There's a bat right there.
appreciate that. You can hear the wind whistling through there. It goes right up that ore chute to an ore pass. Looks like they were looking around in here too. Trying to find out what they got going on. What you got going on, boy? Ooh, it's hot right here in Musty Pew. What a difference. And that's where they stop. That's the working face or where it faces out. Right there. Uh, yeah, what a difference. Fresh air. Holy cow. Okay, let's see what we got. Somebody was kind enough to put a ladder here. Ah. It goes into an ore pass, that's for sure. That face is out right there, too. Wow, you can really feel that air coming through here. You can really feel that air, that airflow. Look at that. That's definitely an ore pass. Let's take a look. Oh my gosh, the wind is unbelievable right here. It's cold, too. on with that little tiny rope. rhyolitic dike that I told you about and I already went into what's rhyolite and what it's composed of its composition and why it's important with gold deposits but if you haven't seen that I'll leave a video link down below and I told you that too now they found a deposit of gold up there but they didn't want to have to haul it all the way down here so what's the easiest way to get it from there to here that's gravity son miners use gravity all the time in the mines now some mines they use gravity trams where you have an aerial tram bucket, one's empty, one's full, and they just keep repeating the process all day long. The gravity pulls the heavy one down while it pulls the empty one up, and you got a brakeman at the top. If you don't want to put in a gravity tram, aerial tramway, you can drive a haulage drift all the way up until you cross cut whatever vein structure you're trying to get to, and then work from it underneath, which is so much easier. Because every time you fire around, it brings the material straight down into your your ore chute and then you can just haul it out through this haulage drift. It makes things a lot easier than trying to pull it up, put it into an aerial tram and then bring it down. So that's what they did. A lot of people ask me all the time, Jeff, how did they know where to put mines? Well, sometimes they're not mines, they're haulage drifts. They're just avenues to get up underneath the ore that they found outcroppings of high up on a mountain. And that's why you'll see some of these portals all along the hills that don't make any sense. You know what I'm gonna say? <laughs> So come on, let's go! Look at this monker, huh? Yeah, you know what that is, boy, you better. That's a huge dike. Actually, it's a small dike of rhyolite. See that, isn't that beautiful? And it's cutting through trachyte. And I'm gonna show you all that because it's a whole lot of ikes. Now, if you're in a gold producing district and you got a lot of rhyolitic dikes that are cutting through basement rock 
a granitic basement rock or even intermediate like andesite check and see if they got any gold values around them I'm going to show you how to do that a lot of times you're going to have what's called extension veins feeder dikes and parallel veins this is really important the reason why is because they can have gold values in them too and I'll go over them systematically so you can understand right now I'm standing on a small rhyolitic dike it's a feeder dike and it's coming off of one of the volcanic necks or plugs that's about a mile away so you're gonna look for feeder dikes you're gonna look for extension veins extension veins are basically veins that are an extension of the original vein that they found gold hosted material in and you're gonna look for parallel veins a lot of your fractures fissures and seams they're gonna have veins that run right next to them maybe two three four they can run parallel or sometimes radial because I've seen a lot of people find these outcroppings or they'll find these reefs or low deposits and they don't check the area to see if there's a, a parallel vein now this is that rhyolite dike that I was telling you about you've got dikes and you got sills dikes are gonna run vertically and sills are going to run horizontally and that all depends on the fractures or fissures that are in the basement rock when it was intruding up you can see where this dike is cut up through this trachyte trachyte's an intermediate it's in the andesite family you can't miss it and you can see through contact metamorphism where the rock has started to change as it came up it intruded through this fissure and it superheated the wall rock which is this trachyte and you can see where it started to change its structure and basically it was cooking it you've got two different types of metamorphic models you've got contact and regional and all that means is that wherever there is contact with superheated rock which is your your magma it's going to change the structure of the wall rock that's contact metamorphism regional metamorphism is more of a compressional heating like california where you have orogenic processes going on that is literally bending and folding and crushing the rock and it's changing it into a metamorphic rock and when you have regional metamorphism you can get mesothermal vein deposits you're not completely melting the rock because if you did that would be igneous it's being partially melted which is still in the metamorphic category by doing so it's changing its structure its mineral assemblages that are in there and then what happens is is as you do that it dehydrates the rock and as you dehydrate the rock of course all those fluids are carrying the minerals in them and they're superheated and they're going to travel into fissures and fractures and so on and so forth that's how you have those deep-seated mesothermal veins in california but that's not what we're talking about here get over here so what are you gonna do so what did the old timers do well take a look at this you can see where they cut in through here and they start blasting into the side of this rhyolite and they were looking for what that nice red hematite staining going on in here but as you can tell they didn't find much of anything it doesn't look like anything now it might get richer deeper down but are you gonna spend the money and the resources to find out? That's when you're gonna have to start doing core drilling. But when you're out in the field and you see something like this, especially where the old timer's been poking around, what do I want you to do? I want you to get up around the edges here. See this, where a lot of this rhyolite is eroded away. And I want you to dig down and I want you to bring a classifier and a gold pan. You're gonna dig this stuff up. It's called taking a soil sample dig it up classify it and then you're gonna make sure that you bag it and tag it to where it belongs so you don't forget then take it back use jet dry pan it out now when you're doing hard rock sampling there's different ways you can do it you can do a soil sample which is around the outcropping you can actually do chip samples where you're chipping off of the areas that you think have any gold values locked up in them based on the mineralization content or you can drill them all you got to do is bring a cordless drill and about a two foot bit that you use for concrete for drilling in concrete and what you're going to do is you're going to find the area that has the heaviest mineralization like this section right here see all that deep red hematite running through there yeah 
what I would do is, is I would drill here, drill here, drill here, drill here. Then all the drillings that come out of there, the cuttings, I would collect those up, keep them separate, and then pan that and see if there's any gold values in there. Make sure you keep them separate because there's been times where I've seen gold in the obvious places like the heavily mineralized zone. And then I've also seen gold out here in the non-obvious areas. Now what I've seen a lot of guys do, and you can do it too, is you can take those samples and send them in to have them assayed. Make sure it's a fire assay, not a XRF spectrometer gun. Those are good for in the field, but they don't give you an accurate count of what's in the rock itself. Where are you gonna find these fire assay guys? In the back of the ICMJ magazine. And if you really want to be sure, you send it into two. That way you can compare your numbers. A lot of the small mines, prospects, were never documented. And it's always worth checking them out to see if there's any gold values. And the reason being is because back then the prospectors were looking for high grade because they needed gold then so they could live. It wasn't about, oh, I found gold and it's nice and fun. No, they didn't find gold. They starved to death and died. So they're looking for the high grade. If it wasn't high enough grade, they moved on. And that's where you come in at. Because their low grade can be your high grade. Think about it. If they walked away from half, half an ounce per ton, even if you can't mine it, claim it up and sell it to a mining company. Make money from that. Now that brings me to another question. A lot of people ask me, Jeff, how much gold should I be getting out of my hard rock mine to make it worth it? If you have to physically remove the ore out of the mine, which means somehow using hammer drills or drilling and blasting, any of those means to get it out, it has to be at least one ounce per ton nothing lower or you're wasting your time unless you like digging holes like me if it's already in the mine dumps you can get away with three quarter per ton and make the mine pay for itself i've seen some guys even do half ounce for me three quarter ounce low as i'm going if i got to get it out of the host rock one ounce and it's got to be free mill well, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, smash that like button. Smash it hard, boy! Don't forget to subscribe, too, because we got more videos coming out, especially the drift mine, and you're going to want to see that. Ooh, and don't forget to hit the bell notification, too. That way you know when we make videos. It's common sense, son. All right, so until next time, this is Jeff Williams, and who? The entire great Southwest, that's who. Saying you're trying to find gold but you don't know what to do, I'm giving you all the tips I got, boy, to help you find that AU. Take care, everybody.